Dynasty Podcast. Let's go! All right, everybody, be cool. This is a robbery. What's going on? Welcome to the Ride or Dynasty podcast, episode 42. I am your host for the evening, J.J. Wenner, and I am joined by a motley crew of fantasy freaks. First up is Eric Braun. Eric, we got to sit together and watch Sammy Watkins on Sunday. Have you recovered no, JJ, I, I really haven't. I, I mean, that was watching Sammy Watkins cook Richard Sherman towards the end of the game. That was with you. I mean, that, that was just a special moment for both of us right there. Yeah, um, it was beautiful to me as well. Uh, also joining us tonight is the Debbie Dirtbag himself, Ryan Bickerstaff. How are you doing, Ryan? I'm great, JJ. Thanks for asking. I'm ready to dive into these rookie quarterback prospects. Oh, I know you are, but rounding out the foursome, the man with the best short game, Michael Kloss. What's the good word, man? Tell me, if you're going to introduce a pod like that next time, I, I want you to call me Honey Bunny or Pumpkin, if you're cool with that. <laughs> well, every other word was a curse word, but if we have our way, I'm just I'm going to have you guys be like three little Fonzies here. One of these and days. Michael, <laughs> what's Fonzie like? He's cool. What? Real cool. Correctamundo. <laughs> so, in our main segment tonight, we're going to go through our top 10 rookie QBs. Some of these are guys you'll want to target in the first round of your rookie drafts in super flex leagues. But depending on the situation, many of these guys are might only make a great addition to your deep bench or taxi squad. But before we talk about the rookies, let's have some quick thoughts on the Super Bowl besides Eric and I sharing a moment with Watkins. Uh, for me, personally, it was a great game. But for, it was kind of short of any drama for me. But, Ryan, you have some thoughts about uh, a debate over the MVP. Yeah, you know, you guys know that I'm not the biggest Damian Williams fan on the planet. No, no way. But even I can see that he deserves <laughs> to be me. the MVP of the Super Bowl. Get out of here. What? Like, uh, you know, Mahomes, he's phenomenal, but straight up, this is a media move to grow the legend of the new face of the NFL. I don't think they picked the the true MVP of the Super Bowl, which should have been Damian Williams. I, I got to say, I'm a strong disagree on that. It's not Williams' fault. He had a great game, uh, some really big catches, but he just can't compete with the value Mahomes brings to the Chiefs, even in a bad game. The Chiefs can't win that game without Mahomes. They could probably I mean, get by without Damian Williams. I mean, Thank Ryan, you. I, I don't want to jump on you, my friend, but okay. media move. You sound like you're turning a little orange there, but, uh, you know, 286 <laughs> yards, two TDs, 29 and a TD on the ground. He was the straw that stirred the Chiefs' drink. <laughs> well said. Yeah. I think right. uh, Fair enough. Mahomes definitely. And, I mean, that last run at the end was nice, but. I, it while it dagger. did cap the game, yeah. So, but daggers don't earn MVPs, right? They would not have won that game, as Eric said, without Mahomes. Yeah, unless you're a Dallas cornerback, they don't they don't win any uh, MVPs. I can't remember the guy's name who ran it in and made like a couple million off of a late uh, interception. Also, a Tampa Bay guy made a lot of money off of a late interception, but. Yeah, we don't have to pile on, man. I feel bad. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, Williams was good, but honestly, that last dagger, he should have done a Brian Westbrook. And was it Larry, Br one. Larry Brown? Yes. Well, yeah, don't thank me. Just thank my Googling skills. That's all. You're a good Google go go <laughs> Googler. Great Googly Moogly. <laughs> all right, so what about going forward? Anybody from San Fran or – oh, I'm sorry. They hate being called San Fran. Anybody from San Francisco or uh, our team from the great state of Kansas who we should be watching? <laughs> I, I had a feeling the Trump reference is coming at some point. 
Uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and say go get Nicole Hardman. He didn't do a whole lot in the Super Bowl, but he was a Pro Bowl returner as a rookie, and he had over 500 receiving yards, added six touchdowns. Uh, those were similar numbers to a certain stud wide receiver that plays for the Kansas City Chiefs right now, uh, Tyree Kill, as a rookie. Uh, not to mention Hardman's going to be only 22 when the 2020 season kicks off. So I think he's a definite buy candidate right now. And uh, his ceiling's very high in that offense. Yeah, in- interesting. Um, I'm going to – I think this is obvious. But, uh, you know, for all the A.J. Brown hype, I really am starting to come around to the idea that Debo Samuel might have be, been the best rookie uh, in this 2019 class. Uh, you know, he was used often, he's super fast and you're not going to be able to pry him away really from any savvy owner at this point. But uh, I would also maybe take a look at Jalen Hurd as a flyer. If you've got any like extra late round picks hanging around, uh, he was the forgotten man, but he can easily come back and, and be put into this offense, especially depending on what Dante Pettis' skill set, uh, what he can do or what he's able to do. I like Debo, man, but the Terry McLaurin disrespect. Got to stick up for my guy. <laughs> okay. But no, I, I agree. Debo's, Debo's, I think, going to be a really key piece in San Francisco, and it's exciting how much they just want to get the ball in his hands any way they can. Um, I think he's going he's gonna to be really heavily involved, and Kyle Shanahan's going to know how to do that. So that'll be exciting. He'll know how to do that, except when it comes down to crunch time in a Super Bowl. But... I I do like Jalen Hurd. Uh, I know I mentioned him to Eric while the game was wrapping up. He is somebody I'm trying to get thrown in on any trade I can. Mm-hmm. I really am looking forward to seeing what happens with him next year when he comes back off of IR. Interesting prospect there, you know, just because, uh, like I said, he's the forgotten man. And I think that he is a good throw in. That's a great way to uh, acquire shares of him. Yeah, well, before we get to our main segment, please give us a like and subscribe to the pod. If you leave us a review, I'll read it on air like Burgundy, man. I'll read anything you put on the teleprompter. Anything. Also, visit our web- website at riderdynasty.com and interact with us on Twitter at Ride or Dynasty. Now, I am excited for our main topic tonight. I'm personally just starting to get my draft guides, diving into the rookie class. So tonight I am going to be a student and I'm going to try to pick the brains of my pod partners. So now on to our main segment. Michael, why don't you start us off with our tier one rookie quarterbacks? Thank you, sir. And uh, I do challenge you as you are being a student of the game to make sure to let uh, our listeners know that we tried to break this up within tiers and Brian did an awesome job of kind of naming these tiers about where we feel like uh, each player is sitting. Um, So to kick this off. Uh, you know, we got a chance to go through and, and rank all of these quarterbacks that we thought one through 10. And we came up with this list right now. And without further ado, as you mentioned, our number one quarterback, which tier one, a day one starter, we're calling it is Joe Burrow from LSU. Now getting a chance to watch him, uh, I I see his football IQ right away. You know, he's got high accuracy in the pocket and on the move. That's the type of quarterback that I like. Um, One of the things also that I really enjoy about him is his fantastic footwork and just really um, what some other analysts call anticipatory throws, right? He's extremely aggressive downfield and unafraid of the pocket. And I was sharing with this with Ryan. We were talking about uh, just how aggressive downfield he is. Uh, did you know, and you do know this because uh, I was talking about it in our Slack channel, but Joe Burrow had more touchdowns um, in the Atlanta field. What is that, the Mercedes-Benz Stadium, just to make sure I get that right. Sorry, no plugs. Uh, but he had more touchdown passes in two games than Matt Ryan had at home in eight games. Like, that is a mind-blowing stat to me. Uh I will say, you know, if you're nervous about him whatsoever, if you're a Superflex 101 and you're just trying to think about it, 
uh, he's your obvious answer. Um, even though he only really you know played that one big year, just don't forget that he was an Ohio State recruit, and then he got beat out by Dwayne Haskins in 2018. And and I mean that's nothing to be ashamed of if you're especially if you're a Haskins believer. Um, to kind of recap, and then I'll let uh, somebody else talk a little about Mr. Burrow. Is he is a little bit of an older rookie at 24 years old, uh, two years older than Kyler Murray, Sam Darnold. Dwayne Haskins, Daniel Jones, and he's the same age as Baker Mayfield, uh, Deshaun Watson, and Patrick Mahomes. So I don't think that that would bother you, but it's still worth mentioning. So Joe Burrow, uh, I have him ranked number one. We all have him collectively there. Um, I don't know they're going to get much pushback, but uh, I'm going to kick it to Eric. Uh, what do you What do you think about Mr. Burrow? Yeah, I mean, I think I think you nailed it there. Honestly, um, totally agree on all the all the pros. Great accuracy, great touch downfield. Love the aggressiveness. That's huge, I think. Um, the pocket presence is incredible. The Not just the awareness within the the pocket, but the ability to move when he senses that pressure. Um, for me, when it comes down to a quarterback, um, I, I love physical traits. They're great. I love the strong arm. love the mobility. But I'd rather have a more refined or mature prospect, whatever you want to call that. And I think Burrow is one of the most refined QB prospects I can remember. He's not the most physically dominating. He doesn't have the strongest arm. But to me, he's just so together as a, as a prospect mentally um, that he, he's the best quarterback prospect for me since 2012. I don't know if that's uh, a bold take or not, but I can't think of anyone in the last eight years that that I would take over him. Cincinnati's wow. lucky, yeah. Cincinnati's very lucky. Yeah, they're getting Ryan? a good, really good quarterback here. And I'm not sure what more I can add to that. You guys knocked it out of the park there. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, Burrow's – the it factor is off the chart with this guy. Uh, like Eric said, not the strongest arm, but it is good enough to get the job done. Very accurate. He extends plays well with his legs. And he's he's a galvanizing leader, too. He's one of those guys that the locker room can get you know behind. They'll – rally around him and that takes the team to the next level so uh yeah bro is uh i think he's a safe bet as the number one quarterback here yeah i think that goes without saying um i mean everybody pretty much has the top two uh in their own tier so uh ryan why don't you start us off with number two only because you're the only person who can say his whole name <laughs> All right, so we have Tua Tagovailoa from Alabama at number two. Uh, now, for all the praise that we just heaped on Joe Burrow there, I think Tua's actually the most talented quarterback in this class, but it's his injury history that really has me kind of freaked out about him. Because, uh, you know, in the NFL, the defenders are bigger, they're faster, they hit harder. Uh I'm worried about can he hold up? You know, he's had some ankle injuries. He had that major hip injury. Uh, but as far as a quarterback, there's nothing more you can ask for. He's great arm strength. He can make all the throws. He's pinpoint accurate. And dare I say it's generational. Uh, he throws with great anticipation. And, uh, yeah, there is there is one very lucky receivers group in the NFL right now that is going to be very, very happy that he's their quarterback. Uh, Michael, go and ahead. Not to mention you know, I... he has... Oh, go on. No, go, 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 go. Oh, I was going to say, not, <laughs> not to mention man. he's a face of the franchise material. He has the it factor off the charts just like Burrow. He has star written all over him. Like, this... He almost feels like a sure thing. The only thing that I think can derail his pro career is injury problems that pile up. Yeah. I was I would I would never stop a uh, an a, an Alabama fan from continuing on about uh, one of his favorite players. So I'm glad you got to get that out there. Um, I you, you know you mentioned injury right, and I think that that's the the million dollar question right. Um, uh, it, it makes me nervous too, but I don't see why he doesn't end up here on the Lions or the Dolphins, right, as a top five pick, even if he has to, you know, sit back for a little bit. 
Um, I have done a little bit of reading on him and, and some pretty good film study. And one of the odd things that I've seen just kind of across the internet is uh, everyone want, kind of wants to put him in that Russell Wilson category or the comparison. Um, you know, we've kind of talked about comparisons before. It's it's one of those things you don't have to do, but if you feel like you've got a good one, you should let it fly. Uh, I kind of feel like he's, you know, the left-handed Drew Brees here. You know, he's great from the gun. He's not afraid to make plays with his legs. Not very Drew Brees-esque, but he still is control of himself um, when he is flushed out of the pop pocket. Um, you know, I read that Bam also had some, you know, predetermined plays that they went through and uh, that he was only really advised to run if his primary target was covered. Um, I don't know how that's going to translate to the, uh, the NFL, but it's definitely not a knock. So, um, you know, going through like your progressions is, is not a huge necessary step that's like 100% for me. I, I think some of his, uh, you know, athletic ties are, are generally going to uh, really take over. So um, I think he's great. Um, Eric, when you're uh, finished talking about Tua, I want to ask JJ a question about these two quarterbacks. So you fire away, and then uh, I'll hit him with it. All right, yeah, uh, not much to add. Again, I mean, you guys covered it. I think we're all pretty much on the same page here. A lot to like. The accuracy, especially on the run, is really exciting. Uh, Injuries, again, obviously the big knock. But if he's healthy for the season, that's not really something that worries me. I'd love to hear Nick on the pod sometime to to dig into that a little bit more, see if there's any long-term concerns there. But I'm pretty comfortable with him right now. the only other main concern I can think of is that he's possibly been carried by the loaded Alabama offense. Um, I've seen some people say that, and there are, I mean, just look at Henry Ruggs and Jerry Judy in this draft alone. Um, there's a ton of talent on that offense, but I don't really think that when you watch him play, you see him being carried. I think he's just as much a contributor to that offense uh, as the rest of them. Okay, JJ, here's uh, my question to you. Is after listening and, and do, either doing your own film study, just looking at both quarterbacks, do you think that there's any way whatsoever that Cincinnati doesn't take Burrow at number one? Um, I think there's absolutely a, a possibility. Um, as, a, as a lover of math, there is always a non-zero chance they don't go Burrow. Um, they could easily trade back if they're in love with another QB. I mean, we saw the the Giants go, like buck the odds and go with Daniel Jones at a later pick. Um, everybody kind of cursed him, but Daniel Jones showed up. So it really depends on who that um, that team falls in love with. I think they're going to go Burrow, but you know they can also trade back and fill a lot of holes on that team. Could even, go but I guess. Could even I go guess Chase my Young. sorry, <laughs> you sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say they could even go Chase Young. I mean, it's probably not the likely option. It's not what I would do, but he may be the best overall prospect. Right. So you never really know what's gonna happen. Now, my question to the three of you: um, If Tua doesn't get hurt, is he the number one? Yes. I mean, Ryan has him number one. I think he would be the number one. What about Michael and Eric? I disagree. I think Burrow has that locked up. I think I think Burrow's on another level. I'm very surprised to say that because I never in a million years coming into this season would have put Burrow over Tua, but his season was absolutely incredible. Uh, it's no knock on Tua, but... I no, I mean, that, that's a great question. I mean, all the, you know, the tank for Tua hashtags that we saw before the season and we saw Burrow's stock just uh, continue to rise... But there were, you know, it was, again, a knock against Tua, I don't think, uh, or even really injury concerns. It's just that he just shot up the chart and became super impressive, super efficient, raised that entire team. And, I mean, I mean, you have a couple of wide receivers that now are highly regarded in this draft and then a Blitnikoff Award winner that will, you know, probably be highly drafted next year, too. Uh, a rising tide lifts all boats. So uh, that's Joe Burrow in a nutshell to me. And I would definitely take the chance on him at number one. Hmm. 
Good answer. Now, so that's the end of our tier one. Um, tier two, who do we have, Eric? All right, first off, uh, Justin Herbert from Hebert. Is it Hebert? Ryan, this seems like a, a question for you. I think it's Herbert. Herbert, got it. From Oregon, uh, he, he, to me, doesn't deserve to be in this tier. I'll be honest. I'll come out and say it. We went with tier two as the starters group, and I don't get the Herbert love. I think you guys are going to push back on me on this one a little bit. But he's getting mocked uh, as early as top five, top ten pick. Um, I get the prototypical size. He can make all the throws. He's got a great arm. Uh, He does make some really flashy throws at times, but he's kind of the anti-Burrow to me. I'm not sure he actually plays the QB position all that well. His accuracy seems really hit or miss. Uh, I was very disappointed watching him. Reminded me a little bit of Josh Allen. Uh, Lower highs and higher lows than Allen, but same sort of thing where it feels like we're overdrafting a guy based on physical traits. All right. Yeah, actually, I can't disagree that much with you there. Uh, Like, when I watch Herbert's film, I see an average NFL starter and nothing more. I I don't really see a guy that should go top 10, top 15, but he will just because he does have all the traits. He's, he's what, 6'5", 6'6", 230. Uh he has all this, the necessary necessary statistics in college, uh, but yeah, like I said, it's just it's a feeling when I watch his film, when I watch him play, I just can't shake it. Uh, he just looks like a meh starter in the NFL. You know, it's it's really interesting that you guys both kind of lead off with saying that when we're talking about uh, you know uh, a tie for number three in our tier two for starters. The NFL has been a little bit different over the past couple years, uh, just in my opinion, whereas great athletes are excelling really at, at any position. Like, you don't need to be Peyton Manning to be an ideal quarterback prospect. And the way that NFL evaluators are looking at talent is is just different. Like, the game itself is kind of shifting, um, but I, I can totally understand your point of view. Um when I've seen him, I, I'm yeah. Eric's kind of right on the the accuracy. It can be hit or miss. Um, I like the poise and pocket presence, and for a rookie QB, I'm okay with that because he will need that in the NFL. Um, he is a threat of you know just running the ball, and he showed that in the Rose Bowl. But he really is an athlete. He's a first read then scramble type of quarterback. And if you're talking about is he the best NFL prospect, uh, you guys hit the nail on the head. Can he be a immediate fantasy contributor? If you want to comp him or at least talk with him in the same breath as Josh Allen, um, I'm, okay, I'm okay with that, especially right here in this position at three. He is, I think, the third best quarterback. I don't know what that says to the rest of the quarterbacks as we go, but uh I'm excited to see him in the league, excited to watch his decision-making, and he does have the arm strength, so that can be valuable too. Yeah, I I do think that's a really good point about the NFL kind of moving towards athletes in general, even at the quarterback position. Um, I know JJ and I are not the biggest Josh Allen fans, but you are seeing Josh Allen start to have some success uh, using his legs, kind of playing a bit of a non-traditional quarterback position. Um, and I think that's probably something that Justin Herbert could do. I don't know if I buy into that long term, but it's a good point. That could be a fit for Herbert. For the record, my comp for Herbert is Blake Bortles. Ooh, yeah, uh, that's a good one. I, I do believe, though, that Blake Bortles in his first four years was a top 10 fantasy quarterback in his first four years. Now is he is is he a backup now? Yes, you you got it right. Mm-hmm. But if you're looking for short term ROI, um, in this class at least, might not be a bad pick. Yeah, that's another fair point. I mean, I've been looking at this. You know, how do I feel about Justin Herbert as a quarterback prospect in the NFL? But really, from a fantasy perspective, he probably has higher potential than I'm giving him credit for. Especially if he does end up going as a top ten pick, yeah. uh, depending and on the landing spot. I mean. You're right. He could be a completely productive 
quarterback for several years, even though he's not necessarily a good quarterback. Where are we projecting he's going in Superflex and non-Superflex rookie drafts? Does anybody have any thought, or is it just too early to even think about that right now? Well, you have to think he's going to go after the big seven, right? Uh, Burrow, Tua, Dobbins, Taylor, Swift, Judy, Lamb. So maybe in that 1.8 area, maybe, depending on where he gets drafted to. That that early in Superflex, though? I mean, I guess it depends it may- on his draft capital, right? Yeah, it makes sense. And is he yeah. going to be a starter right away? Or is he going to be sitting behind somebody? I mean, these are all questions that need to get answered uh, before we really place him. <laughs> well, yeah, Eric, how do you feel like – what What do you feel if your boy Keenan Allen just happens to get Justin Herbert on the Chargers this year? I was actually thinking about that the other day, and I, was, oof, I didn't know how I felt. I'm, I love Keenan Allen, so whatever. And nobody gives him any love, so I'll take him anywhere. But, yeah, I don't love that fit. Um on the plus side, they have the weapons. Maybe that is the sort of landing spot that we talked about. He can end up with a Blake Bortles fantasy production without the real-life productivity. Well, speaking of somebody who had some productivity, uh, Jordan Love tied with Herbert for third um, in our ranking. So where are we on Jordan Love? Uh, I'll kick this off. Uh, I think he's got a pretty, like, actually great size and good arm talent. Um, I would say he gets plus scores on uh, accuracy and ball placement. Just plus, not excellent. Uh, I think that he's super impressive, athletic. Reminds me a little bit of Colin Kaepernick, you know, like when he was at Nevada. And he's got a little bit of the Patrick Mahomes recklessness in his game. Um, I want you to, if you look at his film, watch the way that he holds the ball. Like, literally, I'm not saying that his hands are huge or anything. It just looks like he's playing with a child's ball. He looks very comfortable. Um, And this also might sound a little bit odd, but watching his tape, he uses the full field. And I just, he'll find a receiver. Um... He lo- he, that's not necessarily that he locks on, but uh, he really can sling the pill there. Um, one con in him is that it does take him a little while to get rid of the ball. And uh, help me with this, as you guys see, because uh, I'm, I'm not all the way up with my terminology every time, but he drops his shoulder a little bit, and the ball almost makes a complete circle it's almost like it just takes a long winding motion for him to throw the ball, almost like a baseball player instead of a a quarterback to get it out quickly. So uh, I don't know how that's going to translate when you have, you know, edge rushers barreling down on you. And if you're taking an extra, uh, what, half second, or maybe, again, give or take uh, a little bit there, uh, that could cause some some struggles for him. But otherwise, a, a fairly interesting prospect there. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, t- I totally get the upside. Um, the The physical skills, again, he has the physical talent, um, but he feels like he needs a lot of development still at this point. Not that it can't come around, but I don't really buy him as a first-round pick. Um, and honestly, I mean, par- partially this is a positive about the person I'm about to mention, but I don't know if anybody remembers Tyree Jackson from Buffalo who didn't even get drafted Last year, yep. I mean, if you put the two of them next to each other and, and show me their film, I don't think I could tell you which one should be a first round pick and which one should be a UDFA. So I'm a little confused on the Jordan Love hype. I get the the upside later in the draft as a developmental prospect, but there's a lot of risk there. The 17 picks is a major issue. And I mean, yes, he's not, he doesn't have you know, a star team playing with him at Utah state, but he's also not playing against the best teams in the country. Um, so those picks to me are, are a real issue. Yeah. Ryan defend, uh, defend Jordan love here. Cause you had him ranked in our consensus. You had him at three. I had him at five. JJ had him at three and Eric had him at seven. So Eric kind of explained his case. Uh, what, uh, what do you see that maybe we're missing a little bit? Well, I, uh, actually, a lot of what you said is what I see on film, too. Uh, and I thought your notes were fantastic, by the way. Um, 
I think that Love might possibly have the highest ceiling of any quarterback in this draft class. Uh, he just has that ability, and he didn't play at a good program. Like he wasn't surrounded by any NFL caliber players. Uh, he he carried that Utah State team on his back, and he kind of played. You know, he he kind of tried to play that role where he was the like the the heroic quarterback where he tries to make all the plays. And it sometimes it's just not there. And I think that like his throwing motion and his decision making, like good coaching will clean all that stuff up. But when you look at just his arm talent and his accuracy and his athleticism, I uh, I think the sky is the limit for Jordan Love. But it's just a matter of can he clean up those aspects of his game that need the work. So. Yeah, I have a I have a first round grade on him. I think he'd go great in a place like if he landed in New Orleans, where he'd sit behind Drew Brees for a year, or New England sit behind Tom Brady for a year. Uh, but like you know, a situation like that, he can learn from a like a seasoned vet quarterback. Uh, yeah, I think he can be a very good quarterback in this league for a long time. All right. Well, you have all given me a lot to think about there, but. Uh... Looking at Tier 3, now, these are labeled by Ryan as potential starters. Um, so let's just kick it off with number 5, Jalen Hurts from Oklahoma. Uh, Michael, what do you like about Jalen Hurts? Uh, I mean, a lot of things. You know, he's a pure winner. Uh, it's still interesting, of course, that we had Tua above Jalen Hurts because, um, you know, he was the one that, uh, you know... <laughs> made Hertz enter the transfer portal there. Um, Hertz doesn't have the best touch, but again, CD lamb wasn't complaining too much. He did make some great catches there. Um, I'm a little worried about Hertz pocket presence. Um, or if he is on the run, I super just love his ability. Uh, awesome instincts, which you have to have in the, uh, NFL and, you know, his mobility does separate him from other prospects. Um, I think that the, he'll need some adjustment period. Uh, he's just absolutely tough. He had, uh, something crazy, like 104 touchdowns in his college career and runner up in the Heisman, uh, trophy voting. So, uh, I think that, uh, you know, he could enter the NFL. I do think that he, if he were to jump right in, he might have some less success there. Uh, but if anyone has the ability, uh, he definitely does to make plays with his feet too. Ryan? Yeah, I just want to say Jalen Hurts is one of my favorite players of all time, any sport at all. Nice. Uh, he's just uh, what he's able to do at Alabama, plus the way he handled that whole situation. And then he transferred to Oklahoma. And under Lincoln Riley, he made such strides as a passer. And uh, like to the point where he threw 32 touchdowns, completed over 69% of his passes his senior season. Like uh, Michael said, he's a fantastic runner, over th almost 3,300 career rushing yards, which is amazing. Uh, he performed well at the Senior Bowl. He got better throughout the week against that level of talent. Um, so I have him at number six in my rankings right now, and the only reason for that is because Jalen Hurts is one of these players that needs to go to a team that's willing to work with him the way Baltimore worked with Lamar Jackson. And that's not a player comp. I don't think they're anywhere near the same type of player. But uh, they he needs to go to a place where they're going to build an offense around his skill set. And if that happens, Jalen Hurts can be a very good quarterback in the NFL. But if it doesn't happen, I see him struggling, and he's going to need a an extensive adjustment period to get anywhere. Eric? Yeah, I've got to say, uh, early on in Hurts' career, I was not optimistic about his pro prospects at all. Honestly, watching him at Alabama, he struggled as a passer a lot. Uh, I mean, we all remember him getting benched for Tua, but I've really come around on him since those days. I think, Ryan, like you said, Lincoln Riley was huge for his development. He looks a lot better as a passer now. Um, I know Nick Saban raves about him, one of Nick Saban's favorite players of all time. Um, and I think he's a lot more accurate than he gets credit for. Um, he makes some solid decisions. He's comfortable checking it down when he has to. He doesn't force the ball. Um, he He's elusive in the pocket. 
he'll run himself into some sacks at times, but you can live with that when he, he brings the rushing ability as well. Um, you mentioned Tua getting compared to Russell Wilson a lot earlier, Michael. Um, I actually think Jalen Hurts is a better comp for Russell Wilson. Hmm. Um, I I think he does have some decent touch at times, not a cannon arm, definitely not a cannon arm, but adequate, I'll say. Um, and again, the elusiveness in the pocket, the running himself into sacks, <laughs> pros and cons, reminds me of Russell Wilson a bit. Um, not that I expect that caliber of career from him. I will say, though, he's my QB3 in this draft right now. I still wouldn't pull the trigger on him before day two, but I'm just not a big Herbert or Love fan. Uh, I think Hurts has potential, but this is a two QB class for me with Tua and Burrow. So you guys all mentioned Lamar Jackson, but said that he's not like Lamar Jackson, but still needs an offense to be built around him. What's different about them? He's just not the level of athlete. Hertz is a good runner, uh, but Lamar Jackson's a special runner. Uh, Lamar Jackson's elusiveness is just off the charts. And I think that's, Part of what separates Jackson from a lot of mobile quarterbacks is that he's not just good in a straight line. He is absurdly elusive. Um, The stop-start ability is ridiculous. Um, He's also got a much stronger arm. Um, But I I think Ryan's right. If he could have an off, if Hertz can get an offense that, you know, kind of tailors to Hertz's strengths, he could have a really good career. All right. So speaking of... uh guys who are going to have a nice long career, even if it's as a backup. Uh, Number six, Jake Frome from Georgia uh, was somebody that I watched on the Netflix series uh, and was very excited when he showed up. Now, Michael points out that I'll I'll let Michael say it. So, yeah, he pointed out that uh, he was a star in the Little League World Series. So obviously athletically gifted, right? Uh, everything that I've read and watched on Jake Fromm, he's a great facilitator, and I think that he would succeed in a pro style or West Coast offense. Um, he reminds me of a you know younger Jimmy Garoppolo. I think he's mature. I think his body mechanics are sound, Ooh. but his accuracy is a little bit of a concern. And Fromm has to go to a team with an established quarterback where he can learn. Uh, he does that. He's successful. I think if he gets thrown into the fire immediately, he might be out of the league in three years. Wow. Yeah, I love okay. the Jimmy G comp. I got to say, that's also who came to mind for me when I was watching him. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not sure that that's a great thing. I don't know if anybody he saw w- the Super Bowl the other day, but, you know, didn't really look great. Uh I have some serious concerns about his accuracy, his decision-making. Honestly, he does have good size. He's been a three-year starter for a really good program in the SEC. So that's good, I guess. But honestly, on the field, I don't really know what there is to love that much about him. Ryan? Um, I have Fromm as the number four quarterback in my rankings, and I have a first-round grade on him. Uh, Fromm has all of the intangibles that you look for in a quarterback. He honestly reminds me a little bit of Matt Ryan coming out of Boston College. Uh, He has underrated arm strength. He beat out a five-star quarterback, Jacob Eason, to be the starter at Georgia. Uh, He won 10 games, or 10-plus games, rather, three years in a row in the SEC. So we have a winner. He's a leader. Everything between the ears is on point with Jake Fromm. Uh, he's a really good quarterback prospect, uh, but said that he shouldn't start right away. He needs to go to a place, like Michael said, to sit behind a vet for a while, learn, soak it in. But, yeah, I think he can have a 10-year career as a starting quarterback in this league, just steadily leading an offense. Wow, that's quite a disparity in uh, opinions on him. Um yeah, anybody want to make sense of that? Do it, what I see from Jake from is that he has a lower ceiling. Like, he might have a high floor, but the ceiling isn't quite there as these other quarterbacks. Am I barking up the right tree? I think that's fair. I do yeah, that's fair. want to say, though, going off of that, that 
to me, if I'm drafting as an NFL team, that that's a problem for me. Uh, what good does it really do you to get stuck with an Andy Dalton? Not that Andy Dalton doesn't have any value, but sorry, I don't really believe you're going to go win a Super Bowl with Andy Dalton. Um, but and that's from a fantasy thing. perspective, I don't think that's a very high upside play. We're talking about we're talking about fantasy football here, though. So if we're looking at a guy like Andy Dalton who can get you an upside of thirty touchdowns it all- in a year, between twenty five and thirty touchdowns a year, that's pretty solid production. That's QB two range. Yeah, it's usable mm-hmm. in a super flex, I guess. But I'm just not excited about it. And I think at the QB position, I want that upside, mm-hmm. especially in fantasy. You know, it all comes down to the, the the simple fact of if you're looking at it from an NFL perspective, right? You and almost every GM wants their hands on a quarterback to mold. Like so many more quarterbacks go through the draft or are signed to see if you can actually hit because if you have a franchise quarterback or you get one, then your you could be set up for a long time. And GMs like to take that gamble. So from somebody will take that gamble on him. It just depends on again how you use him. And then looking at it from the fantasy perspective, it's completely different. Put him on your team, you're not spending a high equity draft pick really on him. Like he's probably expecting the NFL draft. What? At least the third, second, third round. Uh, That's at least. And in your, in your rookie drafts, just based on the talent of the 2020 class and every other position, he's probably going to be a late second, third round pick, maybe even super flex, non super flex. Why not take a, a flyer or a dart throw on one of your late picks in whatever league you're at. Yeah, especially when you're looking at a deeper league, um, you have to hope that you hit on some, you know, some free agent quarterback so that you can, you know, move up in a super flex, especially when you're looking at 16 teams, uh, you know, teams, uh, leagues that have a lot of depth. So rounding out this tier is somebody that actually... Our Eric Braun is very high on. Eric, why don't you tell me about your man? Yeah, I've actually got Eason at QB4 right now. Uh, Although I've got to be honest, it's less about liking him and being really high on him as much as it is about him not really being that bad at anything and me not really getting the from Herbert Love hype. Um, To me, Eason is somebody who could have a career as a game managing backup Uh, it's not exciting but he could get the job done kind of what we just talked about with from but there's nothing wrong with that Uh, at this point to me he's he's just kind of being pushed up the board by the lack of other options all right ryan yeah i see a potential starter in Eason, but he feels boomer bust, and I'm leaning toward bust here a little bit. He has a very strong arm. It rivals Justin Herbert's, I think, Uh, but he has a tendency to miss throws low or high. Uh, He seems to also throw too hard for his receivers to catch the ball, uh, which shouldn't be as much of an issue in the NFL, but I saw a lot of drops on film. Uh, He looks deadly from a clean pocket, but he's not very mobile either, so he he kind of strikes me as one of those like six foot six, two hundred thirty pound statue quarterbacks that are going out of style in the NFL right now. And uh, something else that kind of didn't sit right with me when it comes to Eason is uh, he only threw twelve touchdown passes in nine games against the Pac-12 this year, and uh, seven of his eight interceptions on the year came against the Pac-12 also. And in those nine games, he only averaged two hundred twenty-five yards per game passing and we also can't ignore that he lost his starting job to jake Fromm when Fromm was a freshman yeah that was kind of that was kind of odd wasn't it i mean like i said looking at him he's got all the physical tools you know to set his receivers up for success um some of his strengths are fades and back shoulder throws which is uh very valuable in the nfl uh, amazing arm. 
Uh, fantastic poise. I keep saying poise like it actually means something, but he's got good pocket presence. Um, extra dangerous on the move, too, and his accuracy doesn't go down too much. Um, some analysts that I have read uh, in kind of you know preparation for you know our conversation here, I, I want to try to give credit to where it's due. Um, I wish I could <laughs> remember who uh, could kind of help me learn this here, but uh, those analysts have said that sometimes he has a little bit of his ball to sail a little bit high, so... Um, yeah, excited to watch him at the next level. All right. So finishing up, uh, I guess we're going to move to our tier four, our backups. So real quick hitters on these guys. Um, not sure if they're going to do much. Cole McDonald, what are we feeling? I have a feeling we're way higher on McDonald than most podcasts are going to be. Uh, I wrote about McDonald in my top Devi quarterbacks piece last summer uh, where I he cracked my top 15 where Joe Burrow came in at number 20. Dope! Uh, perfect. Uh, <laughs> but what I wrote about McDonald's stance, I think he can play on Sundays even if it's in spot duty as a backup. Uh, he's big, athletic, has a strong arm, decent accuracy, and he's a gunslinger. I love my gunslinger, my gunslinger quarterbacks. And, uh, you know, it leads to some amazing plays, but it also leads to some bad throws and interceptions. Uh, I think McDonald's going to need a lot of coaching, but I think he can play in the NFL. Uh, I echo those sentiments and, and use the word fearless, um, just with a big arm. Uh, his motion is pretty long. Uh, he's re- improved really every year. Uh, anticipation might not be his, his number one strength, though. Um as I say, fearless, you know, he doesn't get scared and keeps shooting his shots because we all know shooters got to shoot here. Um, I really love his internal clock, as they say, um, just understands where the ball needs to be, where he needs to get out, his timing on everything. And he's actually good uh, at RPO. So uh, if he gets to a team that runs that, um, especially if he sees a coverage issue, he'll exploit it. Yeah, I just really hope he, you know, continues the vaunted history of uh, NFL QBs from Hawaii, like Timmy Chang and Colt Brennan. Oh, Colt Brennan, um, the Colt of Colt. There's a Redskin for you. Yeah. So, (laughs) there is a Redskin. Let's move on. Uh, Probably the most boring named uh, QB, (laughs) James Morgan, comes in at number nine from FIU. Um Seriously, like Stanley Morgan was the same way. This guy's an accountant, not a QB. Tell me about uh, it. I like his uh, his size, his arm strength. Um, what I like to think of from watching him as above average smarts. Um, he's got a pro style skill set, uh, adept at avoiding turnovers. This is this one's gonna hurt. Uh, I, I'm sorry, but he reminds me just of a super elastic sighting Andrew Luck. Uh, was a star in the Shrine game, and that's that's like that's so disrespectful to Andrew Luck. I'm sorry, Andrew, but uh, you know when you you know when you're sitting in your mansion and you're listening to this podcast, just try not to break anything or throw anything against the wall when you hear that. Uh, just just call me afterwards. We'll we'll talk. Okay. Um, he did have a good uh, game in the Shrine Bowl. He had two touchdowns, and that kind of made his stock rise a little bit. So uh, he's in the uh, end of the top ten for me. Ryan, quick hit. Uh, I see a solid backup quarterback. Uh, Nothing flashy about his game. Nothing that screams NFL starter. He throws with a good zip on the ball, releases the ball quickly. Uh, Downfield accuracy is a bit of an issue. Uh, He stands tall in the pocket even when it collapses, but that's because he also (laughs) can't run. So he has no choice. Uh, Like I said, solid backup material, but that's all. Eric, why don't you tell them the truth? What's going to happen with James Morgan? Undrafted, <laughs> becomes an accountant. <laughs> Number 10, uh, Steven Montez uh, from Colorado, soon to be running a marijuana dispensary. Tell me about Very well, uh, Steven Montez. Uh, I, again, it, it says a lot about this class that our, somebody in our top 10 might not be drafted. Um, he might go late. You never know. Uh, can't expend uh, plays with his feet. Um, he, he looks like he passes that eye test for me that he looks like he'd be a good quarterback um, just because he's got a really decent frame. Love your frame, Steven. Um, he does take the openings he gets, and the ball is a frozen rope. 
So we'll see what his decision-making skills, how they translate to the next level if he gets there. Little known fact, uh, when I first met my wife, I picked her up with the line, I like your frame. Uh, <laughs> Ryan, do you have anything you want to add? Uh, I wanted to add that I disagree with placing Montez in the top 10. Uh, I would have rather seen the dual threat Bryce Perkins get in. If we have time, uh, I wouldn't mind doing a, an, an honorable mention. Uh, I don't know. With Montez, I see a late round to undrafted quarterback. His ceiling is as an NFL backup. I think he might emerge as an XFL quarterback. Uh, no statistical improvement in the last three years in college, and that was with a talent like LaVisca Chenault to throw the ball to. Eh, I'm just not really feeling it. Yeah, I I have to agree. I'm surprised we didn't see guys like Nate Stanley in here. Um, even like Anthony Gordon from Washington State, I would have thought would have made it before Steven Montez. Um, Eric, anybody you think would have should be in here instead of Montez? No offense, Steven Montez. You're probably an incredible human being and the best quarterback I would ever see in person. I'll second the uh, the Bryce Perkins take from Ryan. Uh, he's a deep prospect in this draft, but he has flashed at times. Um, Virginia's got some solid receivers, but he carried that offense at times. I don't know, Ryan. You sound like you had more to add on Perkins. Yeah, I, yeah. Just... Before Brian, before uh, Ryan adds, I'm going to add something. Uh, I was actually watching this with your dad, Eric. His bowl game. I don't know what restaurant we were at, but we were watching the game, and. I couldn't get over how how much of a gamer Bryce Perkins was. Yeah. I mean, he was getting rushed. He had no protection. And that dude was keeping his eyes downfield and looking to pass every time, even when he could run. I was very impressed with what I saw. I don't know how that translates. I'm not a scout. But I just remember watching him and being like, huh. I should like remember that name and draft him at the end of uh, my big league, big leagues draft. Yeah, he really he really carried that offense at times. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, Ryan. Uh, you were gonna say? Well, I you pretty much covered it. That bowl game against Florida, he was very impressive. Uh, over 300 yards passing, four touchdowns. He threw a late pick, but they were down. He was trying to rally the team back to try to win. Uh, he's Decently accurate. He's a 64.5% career passer. Uh, like you said, keeps his eyes downfield even when pressured. Uh, he threw for 3,530 yards and 22 touchdowns as a senior and nearly 1,700 career rushing yards for Mr. Perkins. So, yeah, he comes in at number eight for me in this class. I think just that rushing ability he has gives him a nice floor, even if he's just a backup. All right, so after all this, uh, why don't we just do a quick recap of our top five? Michael, can you take us through that? Sure. At number one, we looked and uh, decided that Joe Burrow is number one. Uh, Tua is at uh, number two. Ryan, uh, can you say his, his last name for me? Tua Tagovailoa. Thank you. Uh, we have a tie at three and four between Justin Herbert and Jordan Love, and then Jalen Hurts rounds out our top five. All right. Anybody else have anything to add? Well, Stay tuned. I, I think I think we all learned a lot tonight. That was a lot to cover. Yeah. Uh, remember, give us a like and subscribe to the pod. If you leave a review, I'll read it on air. Also, visit our website, RiderDynasty.com. Come and interact with us on Twitter, at Ryder Dynasty. Eric, say goodbye. Have a good one. See you next time. Ryan. Catch you in the next one. Michael. If my answers frighten you, then you should cease asking scary questions, JJ. Check out the big brain on Brad. <laughs> All right. Boat drinks, my friends. Boat drinks. together we die together bad boys for life <laughs>